Welcome to another episode. Today we'll be looking at this guy right here. This is if you have code P110, the intake air temp sensor. And the reason why we're in the kitchen today is because to test this sensor with just very, very basic hand tools, we'll be placing a pot of heating water on the stove. Uh, we're not going to boil the water. We don't want to destroy the, uh, the end of the sensor here. But as the temperature of the water increases, we should see voltage decrease on this. And again, I'll show you, it may sound a little confusing if you've never done anything like this, but all that you need is a, is a multimeter, uh, which, are, which are inexpensive compared to very, very sophisticated scan tools. Now the air intake sensor in this vehicle lives in this plastic tube, but toward the rear of the vehicle. So to get to it, I'm just going to remove the air box along with this uh, plastic housing just so we have a very good and clear uh, picture of where exactly the sensor is located. So we'll undo the clips here. Move this hose clamp. You have two of them on this vehicle. Undo the mass airflow sensor connector. Okay. And of course, if your air filter is dirty, now is a very good time to replace it. So now we're on the other side. Again, this is where the air filter was. And right there, let me zoom in. Right down there, this guy right here, this is your air intake sensor. And all that it does is just as the name implies, it monitors the temperature of the air uh, coming into the motor and it sends that information to the ECM. So if you are getting code P110, you really want to look at two things. Number one, we want to verify that this harness is in good condition. And we'll do a voltage check and also a continuity check. Then, if that comes back okay, we'll test the sensor itself, and I'll show you how to do that. It really isn't that hard. So let's go ahead, let's unplug the harness connector here. You have a tab right here, just push down with your thumb. You can hear it click. There we go. Okay, so this is your uh, harness connector. So of course, the first thing that we want to check is that power is getting to this harness connector because if it is not then obviously this uh, intake air sensor won't work correctly. So what we're going to do, we're going to use a digital multimeter which if you've seen my videos in the past you really need one of these guys if you plan on doing your own uh, diagnostic repair on your vehicle. Without a sophisticated scan tool this really will do a lot of the work for you. So what we want to do is a voltage check and you have two wires coming from the multimeter your black wire goes to engine ground, that's any good metal point on the, uh, on the vehicle. And then you have a red wire, the red wire will go to terminal 1, uh, which is the, let me show you, terminal 1 is this guy right here, okay? That's terminal 2, this is terminal 1. We want to see around 5 volts, okay? So go ahead and turn the ignition key uh, to the on position. You're not going to crank or start the car, just turn it to the on position. And once you do that, let's just check the voltage here. So again, the negative terminal goes to engine ground, positive lead. We're going to touch terminal number one. And we should see around uh, five volts, which we do. We see 4.8 volts. So that verifies that power is indeed getting to this harness connector. If it is not in your case, just check the uh, wires back here. Sometimes they fray, they melt. So just check the uh, harnesses back here. Very often that is the culprit. Now for this next check, we need to do a continuity reading. So we need to turn the multimeter to continuity. Continuity essentially means two electrical points make a connection. And when you do have, let me just place this down for a second. If you do have continuity, you'll hear an audible alarm from the multimeter. So again, your black wire goes to engine ground. The key with any of these tests is make sure you have a good metal point for the, for the ground because if you don't, 
you won't get a good voltage reading on your first test and also for the continuity test nothing will happen so make sure you have a very very good uh, engine ground and what we're going to do this time again black wire goes to engine ground this time we're going to touch terminal 2 and we should hear that audible alarm and we do now if you don't get a continuity reading then you have a short in the harness. Again, look at the wires back here. Trace the wires back as well. So, just take a very, very good look at the harness. But now we verify that this harness is working correctly. So, what we're going to do is test the sensor itself. Okay, and what I did is just remove the entire air induct here, just so it's easier to get access to the sensor here. And you have a grommet. If you take a look at the inside, There's a grommet, I don't know if you guys can see that, but there's a grommet in there. So you gently just want to remove, I actually started removing this off camera so it won't be uh, slow and tedious on camera, but just easily pry up the sensor and it will come right out of the air duct. Now before we test this sensor in uh, heating water, I just want to get a base reading. Now right now it's around 65, 70 degrees Fahrenheit, which is approximately 20 degrees centigrade. And we should see a reading between two to three kilo ohms. So what I'm going to do is, again, kilo ohms is this setting right there in the multimeter. Again, you have the ohms section. And just to make it a little bit easier, I'm going to use one of these alligator clips to clamp on to one of the prongs inside the sensor. To me, sometimes I do this just so I don't have to fool around holding two leads at the same time and trying to touch the two prongs. It's just easier if I can just hook up one lead. That way I have where I can easily manipulate this other lead. So let's go ahead and see what kind of reading. Again, we should have two to three around there. And we have 1.8, 1.9. So we're pretty much there. So as we heat up the water, this reading should drop. So let's see what happens. And before we begin, what I'm going to do is use one of these uh, very long pliers. These are fantastic to remove hose clamps. And I'm just going to use this hose clamp removal tool to hold the sensor. I'm going to wrap a rubber band just so I know it won't lose grip. And then I'll place this on the pot uh, because you want the water just to touch the end of the sensor. This is the part that goes in the uh, in that air box. If the water gets above where the harness connector plugs into, you can kill the sensor. So don't do that. You don't want to get the water too hot, okay? Let me just turn it so you guys can see this. Alright, so that's heating up. We'll grab the multimeter here. Let me just come back a little bit so you guys can see the reading. Okay, and we'll just prop the wire so it's not close to melting. Just be careful, you don't want to burn anything here. Now let's see what we get with the reading. And of course already we're getting a reduction 1.5, 1.4, one point three so as you can see the voltage is dropping and that's what you want to see one point two and when you do this test you know use a pot that maybe you don't use for cooking uh, I actually use this for uh, removing tires for RC cars believe it or not but um, as you can see the voltage is dropping so this sensor is working correctly. So we're at 1.0 and this is just a very, very easy test to verify if the sensor is working correctly. Again, you don't want this water to boil. Really, you don't want to go, in this case, on this vehicle, 0.3 is around 170, 180 degrees water temperature. So as you can see, this is just a very, very simple test and it pinpoints where the problem is in regards to if you have a problem with the sensor or if you have a problem with the harness connector. Uh, so once you diagnose where the problem is, go ahead and make the repair and you'll be in good shape.